Would you meet me in your Bibles this evening? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 5 is our text. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 5 is our text. And the title of today's message is Dire Warnings, Dire Warnings. If you have found the text, please say Christ likeness. And would you rise with me as I read God's word in reverence to his word this evening? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and following deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may take your seats. Father God, we come before you in Jesus' name, asking your Holy Spirit to quicken our spirits, quicken our minds, soften our hearts to receive the truth that you have prepared for us tonight. Help us not to be hearers, but to be doers of your word, O Lord. And we recognize that we are living in the end times, the latter days. Help us to be kept pure. Help us to be ready for our Lord's second coming. Help us to be a bride that is ready for our bridegroom, King Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of you have heard of the name Charles Templeton? Anybody in this house? Okay, some of you have heard that name. Uh, how many of you have heard of the name Billy Graham? Okay, so many of you. Uh, Charles Templeton uh, first professed his faith in Jesus Christ in 1936. He was invited to a church service, a revival service, because he wanted to hear the Cleveland Colored Quartet, and they were going to be performing at Toronto's Parkdale Church of the Nazarene. He attended the service, and that was the day uh, that he accepted Jesus into his heart. And for the next 20 years of his life, he would work for the Lord in ministry. He would form a Christian group called Youth for Christ International, and he would later come to uh, be a good friend of Pastor Billy Graham. And so in 1945, they met Templeton and Graham. They met and became friends. They roomed together. They ministered together. They did all sorts of crusades together, uh, and they preached the gospel together. At one point in Billy Graham's life, though, he had to make a decision if he would come under the authority of God's word. And there was a moment that the Holy Spirit touched him to accept, to radically accept the authority of Scripture. Unfortunately for Charles Templeton, he did not have the same experience. Actually, in, uh, later on in his life, he in 1957, he would publicly declare that he had become an agnostic. Two men of God who had a radical conversion. One would continue to preach the gospel and the other would fall away. Paul is writing to his spiritual son, Timothy, and he is warning him, and I've named it dire warnings, this is very important. Jesus says in Matthew, that Matthew 7, 13 to 14, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. 
See, Paul wants his son and also the church in Ephesus that Timothy is pastoring not to fall into the pit of false teaching. Let's go to verse 1 and see what Paul is saying to Timothy and to the church. Verse 1 reads, The Spirit, this is the Holy Spirit, clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. What are the later times? Well, the later times is the latter times, the times that we're living in now. Between Jesus ascending on high and him coming back, that in-between time is the later times. So we are living in these latter days. We are living in the later days. We are living in the end times. If you have any idea of, of what Scripture says about the end times and you have an eye, one eye open to the world, then you'll know that Jesus is coming soon. And many of us are praying, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come. But he's giving us time so that we would heed these messages so that we would be prepared for his second coming or that he would call us home. We are living in the last days. And there are three dangers that Paul presents to Timothy just in verse 1. The first is the danger that some will depart from the faith, just like Charles Templeton. Or maybe you know of some people who have fallen away from the faith. The danger of apostasy, in other words. The other danger is the danger of being deceived, the danger of deception. Some lies that the enemy pours into you are so powerful that they would actually make you believe that the lies are the truth and the truth are the lies. The agenda of the world is to pump into you lies upon lies, deception upon deception, so that you'd be led away from the truth. And they somehow put a narrative and a spin and say that the truth is actually lies. This is why we need to wake up and ask the Holy Spirit to quicken our small ass spirits, to open up our hearts to receive the truth that God has for us. And the third danger is the danger of the doctrines of demons. In other words, it's false teaching. Where's the, uh, the background of these false teachings or the doctrines of demons? Well, you find it in Genesis 3. Did God really say? Did God really say, no, you won't die if you eat this fruit? Coming directly against God's command. There are many ideas and many, uh, you know, uh, voice bites here and there talking to you about there is no God. There's no afterlife. Just live now and, and be merry, right? Get drunk, get married, do all the things that you want to do. There's no afterlife. There's no consequences to your choices. You deserve it. The best life is now. Just do it. Do whatever you want to do. And you see the result of a world that's doing whatever they want to do. It's chaos, darkness, pain, trauma, people being severed from their own family members, heartbreaks. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit of God is clearly communicating to Paul to us tonight, that we are under this danger of falling away from the faith, the danger of being lied to, the danger of these false teachings are all around us. We really need to wake up because these are dire warnings for not only Timothy and the church in Ephesus, but it's a message for us today. Let's be raw with ourselves. How much of the world you consume every day through whatever media, through whatever means that you have? How much of the world or how much of the word do we consume? If we are filled with the truth, then we'll be set free. If we are filled with lies, we'll be in bondage. It's as simple as that. 
Let me make it plain to you. If you eat, what's the worst kind of food that we can eat? I'm just trying to find an example here. Uh, is there a food called ding-dongs? Anybody know ding-dongs? What are they called? Twinkies? I'm not against them at all. But if you have ding-dongs and Twinkies for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner, and then you have it as a midnight snack, and then you have it again for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, guess how your health is going to turn out? You, you might turn into a ding-dong, exactly. <laughs> not very good, not very wholesome, not very healthy, right? There's going to be problems. Because our body needs nutrition. But if you eat a healthy meal, right, fruits and vegetables and good proteins and good healthy fats and all of those things and, and plenty of water, amen, not soda, plenty of water, not, no sugars, plenty of water, then our bodies will receive the nourishment and then will be healthy. Like that, when we embrace and receive the word of God breathed upon us by the Holy Spirit, then our souls will prosper. We'll begin to see things in the light where God shines his light on certain things and we'll know exactly what it is. We'll know exactly the enemy's schemes that are trying to infiltrate into your hearts and we'll say no to deception and yes to the truth of God's love. A beautiful thing. I, I recognize that some people in our congregation already are changing their diets, drinking more water. Can I get an amen? Uh, getting more healthier food. Can I get an amen? That's a good thing abstaining from food sometimes, fasting and praying, amen. Good things are happening. Why? Because on the inside, God is transforming you, and therefore there are some outward things that are happening. Those are fruit of your inner change. What the Holy Spirit is saying to us this evening is to know that there is an enemy of your soul trying to steal, kill, and destroy you. And we must recognize that we stand upon truth and receive God's truth from God's word, breathed with the spirit and the power of God. Let's go to verse 2 and 3. These teachings, such teachings, come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. These teachings, false teachings, Paul is saying, come through hypocrites, hypocritical liars. Who are these people? These people preach a good message, but live a separate life. These people say, do this, and they look all flamboyant. They look all nice and all dressed up and nice. But on the inside, it's like what? It's like skeletons and bones inside. You have no fruit of what you are preaching. Now, one of the principles that I hold dearly onto is that my messages, I hear first from God, of course, but I always ask my wife, will you bless tonight? Will you bless this morning? Every time I preach, and then she would give me some nuggets of what she was blessed by. Because the moment my wife says, uh, Elisha, you preached a good message out there, but at home you're a rotten tomato. <laughs> then I'm disqualified. Disqualified. I want to be the same person when I preach the message and the person that leads and loves and serves in the home with humility. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Instill that not just upon me, but upon all of us. All of us. These people, Jesus says, you'll know them by their fruit. These teachers, false teachers, will ask you to do this and do that. Don't do this. And they, they'll put on a good show. I'm not saying all televangelists are bad. I'm sure there are many men and women of God who preach the gospel. Praise the Lord. But I fear for my own salvation sometimes as a preacher myself. I do. Because the Bible clearly tells me, work out your salvation with what? Fear and trembling. 
Yes, we have been saved. Yes, we are being saved. And yes, we shall be saved, of course. We know those three tenses. But what I can do today is that I can work out my salvation with fear and trembling under the grace of God, under the anointing of God. Every day, oh Lord, please light the fire that once burned brightly inside my heart for you, my passion for you, my longing for you my yearning for you. May it grow deeper and wider and higher. And by God's grace, I believe he's doing that in me and I believe he's doing that in you. These hypocrites are those people who have been seared in their hearts. And this idea of being seared is that your heart, your conscience has become so calloused, you no longer can hear the, the, the prodding of the Holy Spirit. You no longer can hear the nudges that the Holy Spirit gives you. It's just like in the book of Exodus where God hardens Pharaoh's heart. God hardens Pharaoh's heart. Not because, not because our God is a, is a God who wants to just um, uh, sh- you know, uh, make people feel embarrassed or anything like that. It's part of his plan to show his glory through a conscience that is seared. God can work out good through everything. And this situation here about the false teachers and the hypocritical teachers, this is one of the most terrifying things for anybody to read when our conscience gets so seared that we can no longer hear, feel, embrace, apply, obey the word of God. Lord, have mercy. One of the prayers that I pray for, my, pray for myself, Lord, help me to be fallow ground. In other words, good soil. In other words, uh, those, that, that soil that is all moist, right? That would receive the seed of God's word, receive the seed of life from God's word, and that it would prosper, grow 30, 60, 100 fold for the glory of his name. And what these hypocritical liars would do They will forbid people to do certain things. Don't get married. Don't take that job. Don't do this. They will impose themselves on others. That is not the work of the Holy Spirit. That's how cults are made, by the way. Is everybody drinking the Kool-Aid tonight? Anybody remember that that story? I I don't have time to go to that, right? Our God is a gracious God, a God of peace. A God who allows his spirit to speak. A God who will embrace your hurt and brokenness and refine you and restore you and then release you into a brand new purpose and destiny. That's the kind of God we serve. He's a gentleman. He will sometimes gently knock on your heart and say, Hey, son, you want to hang out today? Hey, son, hey, daughter, do you want to watch paint dry with me today? Let's waste some time together. Spend a little time with me. Oh, that first love. Please, Lord, let it be renewed. They also tell people, oh, you can't eat these kind of foods. You can't eat this. You can't eat that. And there's a restriction and limitation to everything. But what does the word of God say? God created them to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. See, food in itself, ding-dongs, whatever, Twinkies, granola bars, carrots, nuts, all of those things, those in itself, they're not bad. It's the person that uses it or abuses it. And everything in moderation, too. When you believe and you have faith and when you have the truth and the spirit of God in you, he will teach you, okay, that's enough now. You've had 10 Twinkies, that's about enough. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Yep. You ate the whole box. It's enough now. Because God gives you the fruit of self-control. You don't live by emotion nor impulse. Because you're always filled with him. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. 
the paradox of the beatitude. I don't want us to live in, in such a fear that's crippling. Oh, because I'm a Christ follower, I, I can't do this. I, I can't, I just, oh, oh, I can't do that. And the more you think about it, the more you want to do it. So this is the answer. Love God. Love him fully. Love him passionately and be loved by him. And then you just forget. Oh, I forgot to sin today. Praise the Lord. Another day lived for you. Another day lived by grace. Let's continue here. Verse 4. For everything God created is good. Verse 4, right? And nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. God gives you the choice. As the truth is embedded in you, he gives you the discernment to know what to do, to know what not to do. Showing you the path that you ought to go, showing you the job that you ought not to take and the job that you ought to take. Showing you the kind of friends that you need to have and the friends that you don't need to have. Discernment that comes from heaven. His name is Holy Spirit who dwells within you. He's our teacher. He's our helper. He is God. He has all wisdom and knowledge. One of the prayers that our congregation prays for me every day, and I'm so blessed by it. And it's Ephesians 1.17. Oh, Lord, would you bless Pastor Elisha with the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know you more? And if you did not know how to pray that, now you've known. Ephesians 1.17. Every time you think about your pastor, you can pray that. Pray the word of God over me, over my family. Over this church, O oh Lord, grant me the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know you more and more and more. And from that place, I get to know that everything that God has created is good. How I approach it is the wisdom that comes from above. Yes, of course, I'll eat a ding-dong. I know I've never eaten a ding-dong or a Twinkie, by the way. If anybody offers it to me, okay, yes, I'll graciously, you know, have one. If it's really good, maybe I'll have two, but in moderation. It's the same with relationships. God gives you the discernment. You know when you get into a group and you know that if they're going in the way of darkness, oh, thank you, Lord, for giving me the wisdom to pull away. If you know a certain conversation is going south, right? You know to pull away. When you need to engage, Holy Spirit gives you a passion to move forward in that direction. It's the discernment. God is giving us a dire warning not to just alarm us, but to save us. Not to become the Charles Templeton, but to be those who will persevere until the very end on the straight and narrow those will not lean to the left nor to the right. Those will keep their eyes gazed on the cross where my Savior died for my sins. Our eyes gazed on the prize, Jesus, who is to come again to judge the living and the dead. These are dire warnings to save us. These are dire warnings to give us life and breathe his love into us. Therefore, the word of God is indeed, like the Puritans would say, a love letter. Don't just read it. Let the word of God read you like a scanner from head to toe and let the Holy Spirit fill you through his word. Someone once told me a closed Bible really doesn't have much to offer. But when it's opened, and when we live in light of his truth, then we can understand, oh, your love for me is so good. And I want to abide in you as you abide in me. There are many things that are going on underneath, beneath the surface tonight, that the Lord wants to touch and heal and deliver us from. But this is what I've learned in my journey through the surgery that I had a couple of weeks ago. 
They prepped me for the surgery. And then they said, now we're going to put you on the operating table. And as soon as I moved over, they knocked me out. Something happened. I, I didn't even realize it. Something went into my body, and I was intoxicated. After I woke up, and I had really big difficulty waking up. They couldn't wake me up because it was kind of my first time ever having that kind of thing come into my body. But after reflecting on that, I knew when the word of God tells me, do not be drunk on wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost, is that God wants me to be filled and be intoxicated with him so that I'm knocked out on the table of grace before him so that the master physician can go in and mend things that he needs to mend, take out the cancer that needs to be rid of, and then I become a living sacrifice. Oh, Lord, intoxicate us with your love. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that you may do a new work in me. And then from that place of restore, restoreness, from that place of uh, being uh, released into a, a newness, then I can live a life that is so free that nothing triggers me no more. You know, that kind of lifestyle. I'm not saying I'm already there yet. <laughs> I'm still learning and growing just like you are. But when God gives us these dire warnings, it's because he loves us. And what he has created is good. And there aren't any foods that we ought to be afraid of. Remember what Peter experienced on that roof when he had that vision, an open vision? It's clean. Whatever God says is clean, is clean. It's not the food that goes into our bodies. It's actually what comes out. But that's another sermon for another night. May we receive these dire warnings tonight as a love message for us to be revived and restored and to walk with him closely, filled with the Spirit of God. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you for your word tonight that is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It is piercing through the bone and marrow, piercing through our hearts, piercing through because you are a good God who loves us. Thank you for communicating your love to us in a warning. Help us not to fall into the deceit and the lies that false teachers give or any kind of ideology that might look good that comes our way, but help us to be grounded in the truth. Help us to know truth. Help us to have faith in the one who says of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, Lord, we relinquish our rights to you. And we ask that you do a new work in us. Fill us anew with your spirit. And help us to live a holy life set apart, consecrated for you. You'll be most glorified. And we'll be most satisfied as we live in light of eternity. So God, we thank you for this time. Have your way among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.